Asking yourself the following questions will help you avoid some typical mistakes with diabetes management. Number one, do you not care about your feet? Or you could just, you know, let your feet do whatever they want. It's not like your feet have any feelings or anything, right? But I think you should. And let me tell you, you should care. Numerous diabetics suffer from nerve injury of some kind called neuropathy. Numbness, tingling or discomfort in the foot is frequently an initial symptom of this. At first, these symptoms could be simple to, you know, disregard, but they might worsen over time. Examine your feet daily to prevent bad foot issues. Watch for swelling, watch for edema, watch for wounds, watch for blisters. Regularly moisturize your feet and clip your toenails. It's crucial to maintain blood flow adequately to your feet. You can accomplish this by wriggling your ankles, your toes, two to three times a day. Also, avoid spending a lot of time sitting with your legs crossed and that could cut off some of your circulation. So just imagine if your feet were just a pair of socks and if you don't wash your socks, you wouldn't want your feet to go unwashed and stinky all the time. Now, would you? The second mistake that diabetics often make is that they may believe that all carbs are equal. Your body converts carbohydrates into glucose like simple uh, sugars. Where these carbs come from is irrelevant. You must consider the total grams of carbohydrates in your diet and not simply the amount of sugar. Because eventually all those carbs become sugar. Just like they say, all roads lead to Rome. Well, all carbs lead to sugar. They contain a lot of glucose and will raise your blood sugar levels often even more than even candy. Natural sugars are also included in this. It is of course true that you should substitute fruit for cookies because you should not be having any cookies. However, that doesn't mean that you should eat a ton of fruits, especially people with bad diabetes. Moderation is the key. Limit your fruit consumption to let's say two servings each day. Also make an effort to include more non-starchy vegetables in your meals. The ones basically that are green leafy, they are preferred if you ask me. Now you can easily determine which meals, including fruits and vegetables, are best for your diabetes using this next convenient measurement that I'm going to talk about. The term for this is glycemic index. And you can see from this rating how likely a food is to raise your blood sugar levels. Berries, for instance, have a lower glycemic index or GI glycemic index. And they have less sugar content than, let's say, bananas or raisins or grapes. So choose wisely, my friends. Don't let those sneaky carbs catch you off guard because they are everywhere. And remember, moderation is the key. But if you are a bad diabetic, maybe you should be cutting out fruits altogether. The third mistake that diabetics often make is they may not exercise too much and they may exercise only a little. Well, I would like to tell you that when you get on those exercise machines, cycling, elliptical or whatever, you become a sugar burning machine yourself. Your blood sugar can be lowered and your body can respond to insulin more effectively with regular aerobic activity. Additionally, don't overlook strength training. Muscle tissue absorbs glucose. Picture it like a sponge especially when you are exercising and after you exercise so get those muscles pumping and soak up all of that sugar into your muscles and out of your bloodstream so pack your day with extra activity whatever you find enjoyable and maintainable is what you should do especially 15 minutes after a meal go for a stroll use a bicycle utilize resistance banding uh, use your own body weight for exercise uh, carry weights whatever method you use make sure you exercise for at least 20 to 30 minutes each day if you only have a few let's say five to ten minutes uh, chunks to do your exercises do that do five to ten minute chunks three to four times a day every little bit helps and i would also recommend that strength training should be done at least twice per week so the amount of sugar in your blood decreases as you gain muscle and it tends to expend more use up more of your energy so that is good so don't be afraid to hit the weights just make sure to listen to your body and don't overdo it and if you're watching this then let me know in the comments below which mistakes have you maybe committed yourself the fourth mistake that diabetes make is that they neglect their mental health it's important to include mental health care in your diabetes treatment strategy after all who wants their blood sugar levels to be impacted by 
you know, a bit of depression, stress, you know, and other factors. One possibility is that you may not remember to take your medication if you need to when you are stressed out. So make sure to prioritize your mental health and keep that blood sugar in check. Of course, we know that your body should prepare for action by any stress and your body does release extra energy when you are under stressful conditions. Let's say when you are in a runaway or a fight mode, your body tells you that let's gather all of our resources, which of course includes sugar. So if you are stressed, it's not just in your head. Your body is reacting and preparing you in the same time. But when it becomes prolonged, then it becomes deleterious. Our type of stress that we have daily, work stress, commuting stress, this is a deadly type of stress. Don't worry as stress can be managed and you could develop some coping mechanisms. Ask your doctor to recommend a mental health counselor if you are unsure where to begin. Or just try some do-it-yourself methods like take up yoga, try mindfulness feedback training, meditation, prayer, also helps if you are religious spend time with those who are you know supportive of you make friends find friends family spouse is fine but you need friends you need friends my friends but of course one size doesn't fit all and see what you can do whatever you choose choose something that can make you unwind and try to make it a regular practice and remember it is okay to take a break and prioritize your mental health The fifth mistake that diabetics can make is that they select the wrong drinks to have. When you have diabetes, it's important to stay hydrated, of course. But be careful, some drinks can actually cause an increase in your blood sugar levels. Diabetes patients are often told to drink 100% juice to stay hydrated. But that stuff is sweet as sugar. I don't like that recommendation. So what should you drink instead? Limit the following liquids. Juice from fruits and vegetables. Although it could be natural, it is pretty still very sweet. Sports beverages, they may help you perform better, but they may also contain lots of sugar. Alcohol, sorry to be a bearer of bad news, but alcohol can mess with your blood sugar levels. It is filled with calories. Soda is just a no-no for diabetics. When you're thirsty, try sipping on some good old H2O water. But if that sounds too boring, try jazzing it up with some seltzer water or sparkling water flavored water with cucumber, mint or, you know, lemon flavored waters without sugar. Stay hydrated, stay healthy and stay away from sugary drinks. I think that is it. I am Dr. Khan. This is what I talk about. I talk about natural means of treating diabetes. You can subscribe right over here. And if you are really interested in knowing all about naturally treating diabetes, then check out this playlist where I talk about seven steps to treat diabetes as well as loads of supplements that you can try. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.